Well Jacob then, my friends, everybody. Are you pretty or you don't get one right of our place. Brining I'm sorry, video, actually, I have a right now, I have No, Laura, you don't care for what I'm doing. No, I didn't. You don't now. And not the more common I'm sorry, but I'm glad you helped. I'm really anxious to hear how you're going to do it. If you're unclear on what that means, I would highly recommend you watch part one of this video before moving on. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at how brining really works the process of diffusion. So let's start with a pretty standard brining scenario. Uh, here we well, have a container of water that contains a chicken breast that we want to brine. To create this Here's brine, we're going to add school. salt. Now, the amount of salt Can that we add salt, is important please? at this point. We're going to get into actual measurements and ratios a little bit later. But for the sake of this I illustration, go -go. we're going to add some salt to our water to create wow. a brine. So now, bad. it's important to understand that what no, we cooks refer to as careful. salt is known to chemists as sodium chloride, water, which is just one of many forms of salt contained within a much broader I'm family sure. of chemical compounds. This oh, is God important to understand because when salt is dissolved you know into water, sorry, it actually breaks apart into here. a positively charged sodium Not ion and do. a negatively charged what? chloride ion. The positively lava. charged sodium ion is predominantly what affects flavor, huh? adding seasoning to the meat or making the brine meat taste salty killer. if it's or over brine, right, whereas right negatively care. charged what chloride ions are what allow brine proteins to uptake more moisture. What happens is that the separate sodium and chloride ions will diffuse throughout the food much like heat does during the cooking process. And just like heat will flow from a hot areas to cold areas, sodium and chloride ions in a brine will flow from areas of higher concentration to areas of lower concentration. Now it does take about 100 to 1,000 times longer for salt to diffuse into food than heat. This is why we can we roast a pork belly in a matter of you hours, but the same pork belly will take about three months for the salt to transform into there? pancetta. Um, By the way, we do have well, a video recipe on how to make pancetta, really which I'll link to in the brine show notes. Old. Now, if given enough time, the ion huh? content of the brine and mind. food will form an equilibrium up to a certain uh, point. This huh? means what that there will be an equal there? amount of sodium no, and chloride ions inside the chicken breast as there are outside in the brine. I'm Once sorry. sodium and chloride yeah, ions start to diffuse into our chicken not, breast, no, something not, interesting not. occurs. To roll. illustrate this, let's this zoom into our cookie individual cookie muscle there. fibers to get a better look at you. what's going on. What begins to happen There's is the on. negatively charged on chloride on. ions will start to diffuse into the muscle only. fibers that make up our chicken breast. Were These chloride ions will then start to repel one breast? another, creating what larger gaps than there? normal between muscle fibers. And these gaps stores. are then filled by the There's surrounding water of the brine, <gasps> allowing the muscle fibers huh? to take in more water. Remember that I finished our previous hey, brining video doing? with the statement that soaking hey, meat in plain water will increase its water Laura, weight through diffusion, but Alice, the meat will not absorb as much water as if salt I'm were present. Really this is why that is, is true. The negatively yeah, charged have, chloride ions create larger than normal gaps between protein breath? fibers Alice, by first diffusing into the fibers and then repelling one another which in Looks turn like allows a extra space for additional water to diffuse into the protein weeks, being brought. Four hours. But now the naturally <laughs> intuitive question arises. Looks like Why do both dry salt rubs here. and brines yield mm, juicier meats? Ha, 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 and there is actually a blatantly false no, culinary dogma that states salty uh, meat no, no, before no, no. cooking will draw like out either. excess moisture, yielding a dry finished product. I'm sorry, here. This, however, is not only false, but the exact opposite of what happens Let when a protein you, is salty. When a protein comes into contact I with salt, here. the muscle fibers uh, are modified in such no. a way that allow Allows them to bind old. water more tightly. Oh my muscle fibers will start to contract and squeeze yeah. out water. Yeah. This is exactly what happens during the salting phase of the you curing mean, process, where a large amount of salt is applied to a given protein, you which in turn will draw out its moisture. That. But at less than 6% oh salinity, salted so meats actually prevents the, the muscle fibers from shrinking and squeezing out water during the cooking process. Now, just to put this into perspective, the average threshold at which food begins to taste overly salted is usually about 1% salt by weight. So even though a protein containing 5-6% to salt by weight will retain moisture while being cooked, it doesn't necessarily mean you want that much salt in your overall no, no fish. No, no, no.
brining process works, New we can start to talk about various brining you. strategies. Hey, Based on what you just you learned, you there are three lucky major lucky strategies you can use when you applying salt to proteins in an effort to keep them moist and enhance their flavor. Number one is dry rub brining. And notice I put the brining in quotes because I'm using the term loosely here. But as you learned in the previous slide, the addition of salt alone will allow proteins to bind more readily to water during the cooking process. So in the simplified sense that brines improve texture, flavor, and moisture retention, a salt-heavy dry rub can be thought of as a dry brine. When making a dry oh, no. brine, salt is usually over. mixed with other dry seasonings such as Pretend herbs and spices and rubbed onto the surface of the protein. A good starting point what? for the amount There's of salt to use is around a 1% based upon the protein's well, weight. The salt rub here. is left for a given period of time, anywhere from 4 right. to 48 hours, and is then cooked as is that? without being what? rinsed. Although this method doesn't introduce store. excess water to be absorbed, the salting does allow the protein to bind what moisture more tightly, doing? yielding a moisture Where finished product, it? assuming of course Where that the protein was cooked properly. The other two approaches to wet brining is the traditional gradient method and the equilibrium method. To give credit where credit is due, I first learned of the equilibrium method from the book Modernist Cuisine, and their section on brining was extremely helpful when doing the research for this video series. First, let's take a look at the traditional gradient method, which gets its name from the fact that a salt gradient is being used to brine the food, meaning that the brine itself contains a much higher salt content than okay. what you would want your finished food product there? to contain. Again, like I stated before, when a food ship? product has a salt content of above 1%, it usually me? tastes oh overly no. salted. Let so in the case of gradient rock. brining, the brine will usually contain about 5 to 10% panic. salt based on the water's yeah, weight. Fine. The food is then placed in the brine for as little as 15 no. minutes no. and as long as a few no. days. But just because you roast a piece of beef in the oven, oven doesn't you mean that you know what your finished internal Tim's temperature to be. Just like you're using a temperature gradient when cooking in a high temp oven, with the gradient brining method, the same holds true the salt content, which is why when the food product is removed from the brine, the food surface is rinsed under cold water to remove excess sodium from the surface. This rinsing step is then followed by a resting period, which allows the salt gradient to form an equilibrium or finish the fusion. No, not dangerous. So when you pull a protein from a gradient style brine, the sodium and chloride ions will be diffused unevenly throughout the protein with a higher concentration towards the exterior of the meat. When the meat is rinsed and allowed to rest for a given period of time, usually a few hours to overnight, the remaining sodium and chloride ions will finish the fusing and more or less equilibrate. Interestingly enough, this is the same reason why meat is rested after cooking, but again, because salt diffusion takes about 100 to 1,000 times longer than heat diffusion, you usually only Please need to rest leave. meat for about 5 or 30 minutes after cooking, whereas a brined protein will need to rest anywhere from 2 to 24 hours after being removed from the brine. Now, just like cooking in high temp ovens requires timing and intuition, gradient brining is to high heat cooking as sous vide is to equilibrium brining. Just like when cooking sous vide, the equilibrium method uh, does take longer. Of salt is the brine. Can I have some money? Oh, no. the the salt so the so no. In this method, no. the water and food are weighed together, uh, minus the bone and the combined weight of the water, Take reading throughout the brining process 